Throughout the Second World War, some of the most horrific war crimes occurred inside of the Pacific Theater at the hands of the Japanese forces. In the conflicts before and during the war, it's estimated that around 14 million civilians were slaughtered, executed, or tortured to death by the Japanese in some of the most harrowing ways. There were even two Japanese officers who held a competition to see who could execute 100 people the quickest using a sword, and this was then reported by the Japanese media almost as if it was a sporting event. But the men were executing civilians with their weapons, and the horror continued in relation to the treatment of those who found themselves a prisoner of war of the Japanese. Some of the evil actions ordered by the Japanese were sadistic, and one of the most harrowing of the war was the Bataan Death March, the forcible movement of 75,000 American, Allied and Filipino prisoners of war, and the terror that these people were subjected to was barbaric. Join us today as we look at the Bataan Death March, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Bataan Death March today is remembered for the horror and torture, as well as the abuse and execution that occurred to thousands of prisoners of war who were forced to march from Bagak to Maravelles on the Bataan Peninsula to the destination of Campo Donnell. But thousands of these victims were taken prisoner of war following the fall of the Philippines. The garrison of Filipino soldiers based in Manila Bay were told to hold out, and the region was to be defended to the last. And on the 22nd of December, 1941, Japanese General Masaharu Homa and his 14th Army soldiers landed in Lingayen Gulf. The defenders could not hold out, and the Japanese then managed to secure different areas, and they were preparing to push forward. On the 26th of December, Manila was classed as an open city, and the Battle of Bataan then occurred on the 7th of January 1942, and it lasted a number of months, until Major General Edward P. King surrendered his forces. But during the battle and the fighting, Masaharu Homa's forces took a lot more prisoners of war than they thought they would, and this caused a huge amount of problems. They needed to move over 60,000 soldiers, many of whom were wounded, hungry and sick, and they had to also move many more who were not injured or suffering. The prisoners of war were then gathered in the two towns of Bagak and Mariveles, and the Japanese then ordered a forced march of prisoners to other sites. One victim of the death march claimed that inside of the town that the Japanese pulled us off into a rice paddy and began shaking us down. There were about a hundred of us, so it took time to get all of us. Everyone had pulled out their pockets wrong side out and laid all their things out in front. They were taking jewellery and doing a lot of slapping. I laid out my New Testament. After the shakedown, the Japanese took an officer and two enlisted men behind a rice shack and shot them. The men who had been next to them said... They had Japanese souvenirs and money. The prisoners then hurriedly discarded anything they believed could result in their deaths, and with this the Japanese forces continued to exhibit brutality. One victim of the march said, One of the POWs had a ring on, and the Japanese guards attempted to get the ring off. He could not get it off, and he took a machete and cut the man's wrist off, and he did that. Of course the man was bleeding profusely. I tried to help him, but when I looked back, I saw a Japanese guard sticking a bayonet through his stomach. The march began on the 10th of April from Mariveles and the following day from Bagrak. As the death march continued, the brutality of the Japanese guards ramped up and they were known for their evil treatment. They held the prisoners in complete contempt and the guards exhibited brutality and they would violently attack the inmates. On one occasion they knocked one prisoner's teeth out for his gold fillings and they even executed many of the victims. It was said of one atrocity that, before we could grasp what was happening, the giant had swung his sword. I remember how the sun flashed on it. There was a swish and a kind of chopping thud, like a cleaver going through beef. The captain's head seemed to jump off his shoulders. It hit the ground in front of him and went rolling crazily from side to side between the lines of prisoners. The body fell forward. I've seen wounds, but never such a gush of blood as this. The heart continued to pump for a few seconds and at each beat there was another great spurt of blood. The white dust around our feet was turned into crimson mud. The prisoners on the Bataan death march were given little food or water, and a number succumbed to their ordeals because of this, and as well as the violence and torture that prisoners had to put up with, with the extreme conditions. 
One torture method used by the Japanese was called sun torture, in which prisoners were forced to sit outside, in the direct sun, without any head covering or helmet, and if someone asked for shade or water, they would be immediately executed, being shot or stabbed. One former prisoner, who was subjected to this, said, I had no more than unscrewed the top when an aluminium flask was snatched from my hands. The Japanese, who had crept up behind me, poured the water into a horse's nose bag, then threw down the canteen. He walked on amongst the prisoners, taking away their water and pouring it into the bag. When he had enough, he gave it to his horse. Anyone who was slowing down was either beaten or was threatened with execution at the side of the road. There were guards ready to shoot if someone was suffering too much, and they did do this. They also shot and bayoneted victims at random, to ensure the march continued with fear in its mind. There were clean-up crews established, who were there to either kill the prisoners who were left at the side of the road, or were there to just move the bodies to the side. It was said of these groups of Japanese soldiers that, I observed that the guards paid no attention to these, I wondered why. The explanation wasn't long in coming. There was a sharp crackle of pistol and rifle fire behind us. Skulking along a hundred yards behind our contingent came a clean-up squad of murdering Japanese buzzards. Their helpless victims sprawled darkly against the white of the road were easy targets. A member of the murder squad stooped over each huddled form. There would be an orange flash in the darkness and a sharp report. The bodies were left where they lay, that the other prisoners coming behind us might see them. When the prisoners arrived at stops, there was a significant amount of overcrowding, and there was also diseases such as dysentery, which spread very quickly, and no help for the sick was given. But the prisoners were then at San Fernando, thrown into the hot metal boxcars, and these trains had little in the way of sanitation. They were then forced to walk nine miles to Camp O'Donnell. When they arrived here, hundreds were dying each day, and there was a death toll of around 20,000 people. Many of these were buried in mass graves behind the barbed wire fences of the camp. In total, around 80,000 prisoners began the march, and only 54,000 arrived at Camp O'Donnell due to the conditions of the death march and its brutality. The estimates of prisoner of war deaths do vary, but at the end of the Second World War, there was a war crimes trial that saw Masaharu Homa indicted for war crimes, and he was charged with 43 different counts, many relating to the conduct of the soldiers on the Bataan death march. He was later sentenced to death and was executed outside of Manila. Today the Bataan death march is seen as one of the most harrowing events of the Pacific theatre of the Second World War, and it is an indictment of the cruelty and barbarism of the Japanese forces during the conflict. Many of those men who were imprisoned by them saw their fate as a possible and probable death sentence. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, Please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.